Hi everyone, today I want to share a recipe for making ginger milk tarts. This is a variation to egg tarts that incorporates another popular dessert, ginger milk pudding. Here are the ingredients, watch on to see how to make these. We're going to start by making the dough for the tart shells first. So take 60 grams of salted butter, or you can use unsalted butter but add a pinch of salt. Make sure it's at room temperature and stir it to loosen the butter up. Next, add a teaspoon or so of vanilla extract. This is really an optional ingredient because it doesn't really change the texture if you add or omit it, but it enhances the flavor, so I add it in anyway. Next, add 50 grams of granulated sugar and stir this in with a butter mixture. Now I've tried cutting out some of the sugar in this recipe, but it really doesn't work well with less sugar. You really need this amount in order for the dough to brown evenly and to bake crisply in the oven. Next, add one large egg yolk and stir this into the mixture as well. The egg yolk adds a little bit of color, flavor, and also tenderness to the dough. For the dry ingredients, I have 115 grams of all-purpose flour and 20 grams of rice flour. The rice flour is optional and you can replace it with all-purpose flour. I just find that it makes a lighter and crispier dough. Add the butter mixture to the flour mixture and stir until you get a crumbly dough. The last ingredient to add is 15 grams of ground almonds. This adds a bit more of a crumbly texture and flavor to the dough. Again, if you don't have this, don't sweat. You can just replace it with all-purpose flour instead. Once your almond flour has been thoroughly stirred in with the rest of the dough, you can place it on a piece of plastic wrap and either flatten it into a disc or I like rolling it into a log to make it easier to divide into 12 pieces later on. But this does need to sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes or you can also put it in the freezer for a couple weeks if you're not planning to bake today. These are the molds that I'm baking the tarts in. I'm only baking six this time, so I'm going to save half of the dough recipe and I'll only do half of the filling recipe, but I'll show you the amount for a full dozen. Whether or not your molds have a non-stick coating, you want to brush generously with butter because you really want to make sure your tarts come out in one piece. To line the tart shells, press the dough ball into the bottom of the shell and then use the pads of your thumb to gently press and ease the dough up the sides of the shell. Once the sides are covered, you can refine the top edge by pinching together the cracks and uneven edges. The top edge should actually sit higher than the edge of the tart mold and this will give you more room to hold more filling. I find this step to be the most tedious and time consuming, but it really doesn't take up that much brain power. So you can really listen to some podcast or watch a movie while you're lining all your tart shells. Once you're done, these have to go back into the fridge again to firm up for at least 15 minutes. To make the filling, start with 120 grams of room temperature water. Add 140 grams of evaporated milk. You can use 2% or the full fat version. Next, add 170 grams of egg whites. And I really apologize because I forgot to film the clip of me adding the egg whites, but you can use the box version or fresh eggs. And then add 40 grams of brown sugar. You can also use regular granulated sugar as well, but I find that the brown sugar flavor works well with the ginger. Then add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and stir this together as well. The last ingredient is fresh ginger. 
Depending on how strong you want the flavor to be, you can add a little bit more or less. For this recipe, I have about 15 grams of grated ginger and that makes about 2 teaspoons or so of juice. Squeeze the juice into the mixture and stir together. You want the custard to be as smooth as possible, so pour the mixture through a fine mesh sieve or you can use a couple of cheesecloths or one of those soup bags and this will help you get rid of any sediments or if you were using fresh egg whites, it'll help you strain out the clumps of egg whites that remain after mixing. The filling now has to rest for at least an hour if not overnight in the fridge and this will give a chance for any small trapped air bubbles to rise to the top which will give you the silky smooth texture. You can see that the air bubbles went away after the resting. Gently stir the mixture because the sugar tends to settle at the bottom and pour to fill the tart shells, making sure to generously fill each tart. Scoop out any bubbles that come to the top and bake on the lower rack at 365 degrees Fahrenheit or 185 degrees Celsius with no fan for about 15 minutes. The tarts are ready to come out of the oven when the edges of the crust turn a little bit golden brown, but there should still be a healthy amount of jiggle in the center when you shake the tin a little bit. Let the tarts cool in the shell for at least about 15 minutes before you turn them out of the molds. Here is the finished product, ready to enjoy. You can see that the filling is super smooth, and in fact, I think I might have underbaked it for a minute or so, but I'm gonna eat it anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!